Hi, I'm Ryan Bozan, and I'm with Steve North, the comedy coach, and he's going to teach us all about stand-up comedy to get us going the right way, the fast way, by teaching the comedic character method. Well, Steve, what are we going to learn? Okay, well, the first thing we're going to learn is to be a comedian and not a comic, to be a funny person, not a joke teller. Okay. Okay. Then we're going to learn to create our own unique comedic character, because everybody has a different one. So we all have our own. Exactly. Okay. Then we're going to learn the most important writing formulas for creating great stand-up material. Uh, then we're going to wrap it up by learning performance techniques so you can get up there and really do it. Great. I'll be here all week. Yeah. The bright lights are yours. Uh, I think the most important thing to learn is the difference between being a comic and being a comedian. Comedic character is your personal theme or your focus. And if you can get it, it'll save you five years of your time when you're developing your stand-up act. It's like knowing what house you're going to live in before you buy the furniture. Oh, okay, I get it. Like the jokes are the furniture and your house is your comedic persona. Exactly, and that's what makes you a comedian and not a comic. It has to be based on some truths about you. That's the most important thing to understand. Then we exaggerate. Uh, I've worked with a lot of stars and that's all they're doing. They're taking a truth about themselves and really exaggerating it. There's actually two parts to a comedic character. The first part is the word flaw. There has to be something wrong with you. Not funny if everything's okay. Jerry Seinfeld. Uh, no life, everything he says is unimportant. Kathy Griffin. A horrible gossip, backstabber. Louis C.K. A loser overwhelmed by everything. Lisa Lampanelli. Gross, insulting. Louis Black. Uh, well, he he's, gets upset. Too upset? Too upset. Chelsea Handler. Uh, well, she's a drunken slut. Exactly. Rodney Dangerfield. Obnoxious. George Carlin is too... Angry. Right. So basically, all these comedians have a flaw. That's right, and that's why they're big stars. Okay, Steve, you said there were two parts of a comedic character. The first was flaw. Right. The second? The second part is blind spot, and it's very important. Because what it means is that the character cannot be aware of what's funny or strange about them. Otherwise, you wouldn't laugh at them. You only laugh at them when you realize they don't get it. It's when Rodney Dangerfield was alive. If he came out and said, now I know I'm a foolish old man and my eyes bug out and I dress funny, but I sure would like to get some respect. Not funny, right? I get it. So if the character understands what's wrong with them, instead of laughing, you'll be like, you know what's wrong with you, go get help. Exactly. important writing formulas for creating great stand-up material. You got writing jokes from the character, you've got exaggeration, you've got the switch, and you've got combination jokes are out of context. And the first one is writing stand-up material based on your own comedic character. You take truths about yourself, maybe flaws, and exaggerate it. Okay, my friends say I procrastinate. How would I use that? Well, that's easy. You would take it, you would exaggerate it big, at a blind spot, and you get something funny. Like, my friends say I procrastinate, but next week I'm going to do my back taxes, I'm going to clean the yard, and the week after that I'm going to get right on that potty training thing. Oh, I get it. Potty training, that's the big surprise. Right. And then you not acknowledging that there's anything strange about you not being potty trained, that's the blind spot. Here's the next major formula. I call it just exaggeration. You can exaggerate anything. The trick is, you have to exaggerate large enough to surprise people. Because people don't laugh unless they're surprised. A lot of people fall into the trap of not exaggerating big enough. Like, I don't want to say my buddy's put on a few pounds, but last night he couldn't fit through the front door. See, that's not a big enough exaggeration. It gets a smile. What you don't want is the sound of 100 people smiling in a nightclub. Because that's the same as the sound of 100 people at a funeral. How, how's this one? How's it, is this big enough? Okay. I don't want to say my buddy put on a few pounds, but last night he showed up on Google Earth. Yes. This one is called The Switch, and it's major. You almost can't see a minute of comedy without seeing a switch. It's just another way of creating surprise. So you misdirect and then you switch. So for example, I was in this tough biker bar. And you should have seen these people. Wiry beards and scars and beefy, hairy forearms. And you should have seen the guys. Ah, so you switched to who there? 
you know, you're talking about beards and I thought you were talking about men, but right. you're really talking about chicks. And that's the trick with the switch. You have to misdirect in the setup. So Ryan, we can actually switch the who, the what, the when, the where. Or switch the where. All right, here's the thing. My wife really annoys me because during the football games, she is always vacuuming, drives me crazy. And she's like, I don't see why you're bothered. It doesn't bother anyone else in the stadium. <laughs> called the combination or out of context and basically what you do is you take two things that really don't belong together and you put them together it's like let's say I'm dating this dental hygienist and I, I really think she likes me because she wants to see me again in six months I see so you take two worlds that really don't match and you make them live together there have been entire TV series and movies based just on one combination joke like uh, the Sopranos Gangsters in therapy. Two worlds that don't go together. Like if we were going to combine Disneyland with a prison theme. Right. You'd have like, it's a small cell after all. <laughs> or the Main Street electrical chair. Or pirates of solitary confinement. Right. Okay, Steve, I got my comedic character. Right. I got some great material based on my character mm -hmm. and the formulas. Am I ready to get on stage? No. Ouch. What? Without a good performance, none of it works. Well, the first most important thing to understand is that stand-up comedy is a conversation. It's not a monologue or a sketch or a performance. You look at them, look them in the eye, talk to them like you're talking to a good friend. Have the conversation. You have to say things like you really care about them. No matter how ridiculous or stupid the thing you're talking about, you have to be passionate about it. Last performing skill we're to learn, Ryan, is timing and delivery. I wanted to get to my jokes as fast as I could. That's a big mistake that a lot of beginners make. You've got to slow down. Remember, speed kills. You've got to think of it like music. You're hitting beats, pauses, beats. We learned the most important skills to get us going in stand-up comedy the right way. One, develop your comedic character, your persona. Use exaggeration switch, and combination formulas to write great material. And be a great performer by connecting, being conversational and real, slow down, and use attitude.